Hello, my name is Lazaro Morales, and along with Danny Adamas and Michael Guzman, this is our report on belt selection procedures and examples for a Mechanical Design 2 class, group number 23. Uh, this is our presentation outline. We will first start with a brief introduction into belts and some of their background. Then we'll have a historical review, starting from the earliest of belts, and you'll see how they transition. Then we're going to go into current designs and show you multiple designs, some of their uses, and how they are selected. Uh, then we will go into a little bit about future designs and how the belt will evolve. Then we will close with a conclusion. Well, belts have been in use for over 200 years in many applications, including agricultural and business, such as printers and other things, but we'll get to that later. Initially, they were mainly flat belts, and uh, they were made from hemp, cotton, and plied leather, which we'll also talk about a little later. Uh, then they evolved into multiple designs, which we have today, in different materials. And although they're still the same basic designs, they're more advanced, and you'll see how they evolved to hold more power and be more efficient. And belts are used in all facets of life. If you look around you, there's probably a belt in anything mechanical that you use, including uh, handheld shavers, automobiles, airplanes, computers to drive the disk drives. There's, so they're pretty much in everything that you see around you that's mechanical. Uh, this is a picture of an early example of a plied leather belt using a 1910 Harley Davidson. As you can see, it's running from the smaller pulley to the larger one. Uh, it's a pretty low horsepower application, so it's adequate. This is a circa 1940 bicycle using one of the earliest uh, groove rubber belt designs. Uh, it was made from uh, tree rubber, tree resin rubber before any vulcanized rubber. It was also with depth for, for such small power applications. Uh, this is uh, one of the earliest tooth uh, rubber belts used on a 1910 Wagner motorcycle, also a lot of power application, although tooth design is adequate for larger horsepower and torque application. The historical review of uh, belts includes early belts, like I said before, made from hemp and cotton. Initially, they were flat belts, and uh, soon after, uh, groove belts were introduced. Uh, but flat belts were mainly used for pretty much the, all the early uh, part of uh, belt design. The pros of using flat belts were that due to their low friction and their design, they were easily moved between idler pulleys and dry pulleys so you can dis disengage machinery. Uh, they were cheap to make and materials were abundant and they were very flexible so you can use them in small, very small confined spaces. The cons is, of course, they were susceptible to slippage due to the lack of friction. Uh, they required frequent replacement to, uh, due to all the slippage, which would wear out the belts, and they were prone to slip off pulleys when you didn't want them to. Um, the transition from flat to groove belts was one of the first major steps in belt design, because groove belts allow, allowed uh, the transfer of more power more efficiently, with less slippage, and they were also able to use in higher horsepower applications. The uh, introduction of vulcanized rubber was the next major step, because vulcanized rubber could be used in even larger horsepower applications. They slipped less, they were less susceptible to damage from the environment, and they were more efficient in transferring power. Hi, my name is Danny, and I'm here to talk to you about the current designs of belts. Um, first, we'll start off by telling you the advantages of belts are that there's no lubrication required, minimum maintenance is also required, and operations are very smooth and silent. The belts are also very inexpensive, which is a big advantage. The disadvantages of belts are belts cannot be repaired. They must be replaced once they're, once they're broken. Uh, if the belt tensions are not set correctly, a slippage will occur. And extreme environmental conditions will also um, damage these belts. Lengths of belts cannot be adjusted. So once you have decided on the pulley length, uh, on the pulley, you cannot adjust the belt if you want to make the pulley bigger or smaller, so you have to replace the belt. There's many different belt types. Uh, flat belts are the original belts, but they have also evolved into newer, newer flat belts, which are currently used today. Um, they're used on cars as an application of flat belts. Metal belts are the same thing as flat belts, except that they're made out of metal. Uh, they're usually made out of stainless steel. Uh, the good thing about metal belts is that they don't stretch because they're made out of metal. And 
corrosion is not a factor because they're made out of metal, it's usually stainless steel. So, um, endless round belts are just uh, O-ring shaped belts. Uh, multi group belts is just V belt, V shaped belts uh, put together, a couple of like, belts put together, and rip belts. Uh, those belts are usually the ones you see on non mowers. Uh, film belts are very small belts. Those are used for applications such as printers. And then there's timing belts. Timing belts are used on applications like camshaft. Uh, timing belts tend to be a little bit more expensive because you have to design a system just for timing belts because the, the pulleys tend to have, um, they need to match the teeth of the timing belt. Uh, but the good thing about timing belts is that they don't, they, they don't slip. There's no slippers in them because they're synchronized into, into the teeth. Uh, these are different type of belt. This is examples of different type of belts. There's the wrap construction belt, die cut belt, the cyclonius belt, which is the same thing as a timing belt. Um, then you have the poly rib belts and double angle V belts. Uh, this is uh, an example of a V-belt, um, and this is heavy duty use on industrial. And then this is the belt speed. Um, speeds usually range between 2,500 to 7,000 foot per minute. Uh, the ideal speed is 4,500 foot per minute. And this is the reduction formula, which has the, your angular velocities and your diameters of your belt. Uh, this is the speed calculation formula. Uh, belt tensions. There's tensions in your belts. Uh, usually you have to find your initial forces on your belts. Then once you get that, you can get your belt tension using the belt tension formula. Uh, my name is Michael Guzman and I will be discussing the belt system design process. So the first step is to determine the service factor. This is determined by looking at what the applications of your belt is going to be. Depending on the different applications, whether it's going to be in a car or in a, some other kind of machinery, it'll determine what your service factor is. Um, and this will help you determine the input and outputs of the system. Or rather, it depends on the inputs and outputs of, of the system. After which, you'll find the design factor, you know, depending on, depending on the environment and, 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 and different, and, and different conditions that your belt will be working under, you will determine your design factor. So after you have all this information gathered, you select your belt. Using this, you, you use the belt to find the driving shaft diameter, and then you select your diameters of your first, of your first and your second pulleys. After that, you find the rate, you'll be able to find the rated power per belt, and then you'll, you'll be able to determine the number of belts that you will need into your system and after which you can determine the belt length and finally calculate the wrap angle. So future directions of belts. Future directions of belts, basically the same designs that, that are currently prevailing will be seen in the future with a, with a new difference is the materials that is being used for belts. Um, instead of rub, rubbers and polymers, you'll be seeing more metals, um, materials that are more uh, resistant to corrosion, that that um, enable or inhibit less slippage. You'll have stronger synthetic rubber polymer belts with higher temperature and stretching resistance. Also, further possibilities in the future is stronger metallic alloys, longitudinal elements for longitudinal strength and stability, and metal alloy belts with high corrosion resistance and no stretching. All of these are possible future directions of belts. So in conclusion, belts, as we all know, are an integral part of mechanical systems from the early times to today's and also they will be in the future. Um, they're necessary to transfer power between pulleys, gears, and other elements. Due to their ability to adapt the, the variety of designs and the capabilities, belts can be used for a plethora of applications. Due to the dexterity of the belt, careful consideration must be taken with respect to the selection of the belt type. So after all of this, we, it, is, it is obvious that as the world of technologies continues to evolve at an ever-increasing rate, there is no reason to believe that the belt will be left behind and that it, and it will remain a part of industry and life for decades to come. This was our presentation on belt design and selection. We thank you for your time.